Hello guys, Elias5891 here with another Contain Module tutorial. Uh, you'll notice for this one I don't have a manual up at all. That's because this one doesn't really require the manual, theoretically. Uh, this is English test. Uh, it's an English test. It, the title is perfectly self-explanatory. Uh, you've got three questions. It's going to give you a sentence. It's going to give you something italicized. You toggle through the options for which one is most correct in that italics, submit it, get it correct, move to question two, get it correct, move to question three, submit, you're done when you got three right. If you miss one in the process, you get a strike and you go back to question one. That's not so bad, necessarily. I mean, we can go through and do some of these. Stationary versus stationary. Uh, creek versus creek. Breath versus breathe. I don't know why this one is in all caps. The problem... I have issues with this module. And you'll notice I left three of those alone for a reason. If you're going to have a module like this, where, in all honesty, the manual goes over a little bit, but it doesn't really explain things super detailed, then you need to have completely unambiguous statements. There needs to be one definite answer every time. But look at this one here. Don't hit the OR with your bare hands. Well, obviously, OR is wrong. You don't hit a preposition. An OR, OR is not a thing. But of the other two, don't hit the ore, like the gold ore, the iron ore, the metal ore with your bare hands. That that makes sense. Don't hit the boat ore with your bare hands. Well, no, you're not supposed to hit that either. You're supposed to row with it. So in my, in my opinion, this one has two correct answers. O-A-R, O-R-E. However, the module doesn't think so. It says there's one answer, and that's O-R-E. So that is my first bug with this one. The second one is the questions like this. Literally or not literally. The earthquake literally shook us up. That one's kind of a play on words. That's fine. If you got an earthquake, it's going to shake you. That's a literal. I hate it when someone literally starts talking to me about my ex. Well, I don't like my ex. So, I really do hate it when someone starts talking to me about it. They're gonna li If someone literally starts talking to me about it, I'm gonna hate it. So to me, that is a literally, but the module says that that's not literally. I actually think that's wrong. I may be wrong, but everything I learned about grammar tells me that that is not the correct answer to that one. And there's a couple of these literally cases that to put it nicely, might be ambiguous, and to put it more accurately is a little iffy. Your eyes are, literally, not literally, so pretty. Well, I don't know about yours personally, but if I said that to my wife, then I would be meaning that very literally. Your eyes are so pretty. That's a not literally. Um, I asked him to juggle, but he literally, did not literally, didn't have the balls. That one, depending on how you want to interpret it, could be literally, could be not literally. Falling in love, literally, not literally, sucks. Again, depending on how you want to define some of that, you could go either direction. The answer to that one's actually literally, so that's not the direction I would have leaned on that one. Uh, falling in love... Uh, <sighs> is kind of an abstract thing anyway. Saying it literally sucks is, is really, really weird. Um, it almost, with that one and the X one, it almost feels like the, the module creator maybe had a, a specific opinion about romance that is maybe skewing a couple of these. I'm not sure. Uh, but I bring this up because a lot of people will not play with this module. The reasons are A... I mean, as you saw, I, as a diffuser, just did it. 
the expert has no real say in this one unless it's a con uh, unless it's one you want to confer on conference reference to each other the manual page is not really helping though it's still just two minds doing it instead of one the other issue is ones like that where answers are ambiguous at best I don't play with this one for that reason. I feel that this module, to be playable, needs to have specifically clear-cut, correct answers that can be justified and make perfect sense. And some of these are intentionally vague to where multiple answers technically apply, whether or not they're the best answer is debatable. Uh, and some of them are just plain wrong, in my opinion. Uh, there was one other issue that I know um, I've seen a racket there's one that um, now press the button with the ping pong racket symbol well that's that word is spelled two different ways based on American English versus British English unless I'm sorely mistaken R-A-C-Q-U-E-T is in British English, that is like a paddle, a sports paddle, is R-A-C-Q-U-E-T, whereas R-A-C-K-E-T is like, I'm making a bunch of noise, I'm making a ruckus, I'm making a racket. In American English, that you'll typically see, those two are both spelled R-A-C-K-E-T. And so that's kind of biasing it towards a British English being the correct spelling. Uh, I I didn't see any particular spellings, for example, that would say, oh, well, this is obviously a British English or a American English set of spellings. And if you're going to have the sort of ambiguities between the two languages or the two uh, dialects of the languages, the two written forms of the language, then it needs to be explicit, and it's not. Now... To be fair, the manual page does define the difference between racket and racket. Uh, specifically right here. In this module, R-A-C-K-E-T is a loud noise, R-A-C-Q-U-E-T is uh, a netted stick or paddle, but it even specifies in U.S. English, racket can be used for both senses. That's... So you've got one obscure rule mixed into all these other grammar rules that people who are good with grammar should know but this is kind of an exception this I'm sorry I'm, I'm starting to rant or I feel myself getting close to a rant Th that's not okay to me you don't have all of this stuff which is logical and follows normal grammar rules and then this one exception which is oh but for this one we're only going to accept British spellings and not English spellings. That would be like having it spell C-O-L-O-R and C-O-L-O-U-R somewhere in the module, and it's saying, you know, right here what the difference is. One is British and wrong, one is English and correct. No, if you're going to be using this as an English test, then it needs to be something that you could give in an English test anywhere. If I gave somebody an English test and they gave me either of those answers, I'd have to count it right. Because unless I know where they're taking it and I know where they learned English, I can't say for sure that they're doing it wrong. So, starting to get a little ranty. So I'm going to end this one here. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, suggestions, in general, leave them in the comment below. If it's about the module, I, yeah... <laughs> To be fair, this is a module that, uh, now that we've, you know, kind of, I've shown you guys how to do it, I've got this video about it, I'm not going to look back at this one, to be honest. <laughs> and I'm sad about that, but, you know, some modules will be a complete miss for some people. And for me, this module is that complete miss. Um, either way, though, thank you for watching, and thank you for tolerating uh, a slightly uh, more negative episode thank you for watching thank you for listening to this one because i know it's been a little less uh explainy and a little more grumbly than normal so thank you for that my apologies either way this is elias thank you for watching have a great day
don't do English test and don't explode. Bye.